I wanted to do an experiment to see how fast I could lose fat while maintaining as much muscle as possible. I basically just wanted to get shredded. Aesthetic. And in this video, I'm going to break down the process of how I went from this to this as fast as I possibly could. And I didn't use a typical diet or cutting process. So if you're interested in rapid fat loss, you're gonna to wanna to watch the whole video because I used myself as an experiment to find out just how quickly I could get to single digit body fat and if I could maintain it. But it wasn't all smooth sailing at all. There were plenty of challenges along the way that you're definitely gonna to wanna to know about because they can make or break your own progress. My legs feel heavy, they feel like lead. I'll go to bed at like 11 o'clock at night and wake up at 2 a.m. wide awake for the rest of the day. Food focus, it's hard to focus on like movies and TV shows in general, everything just feels kind of boring. But let me first give you a quick rundown on my background to give all of this context. So I've been in the gym for a little over 15 years now. And when I started, I was a skinny six foot, 148 pound gamer that was too scared to even bench the bar, seriously. <laughs> but over the years I bulked up and got to a point at my heaviest to where I was about 220 pounds when I was powerlifting. But over the last six or seven years, I've been hovering around in the 190s while doing jujitsu. Up until recently, my best shape was a few years back. As you can see here on the screen, I'll, I'll post a photo there. Uh, I was about 185 pounds and it was kind of a weird situation though because I didn't plan on getting lean. My life at the time was super stressful. My appetite was a lot lower and I was working out like crazy, almost daily doing jujitsu and lifting weights as a way to blow off steam. And all the activity paired with the reduced appetite had me in a caloric deficit by accident for a couple of months and I got leaner as a result. Now fast forward more recently and I wanted to surpass that look but this time on purpose. So I started this cut at 194 pounds and a right around 16 to 17 percent body fat and to be honest I was getting a bit too complacent at the time of my fitness routine which had me not looking like my previous best. I was hitting the gym three times a week but not really pushing myself and my diet was just all over the place. I wasn't getting enough protein, I was eating too many carbs and fats at times, and my calorie intake was inconsistent, it was low on some days, high on others. I just wasn't keeping track of my calorie intake and I wasn't passing up on the chance for a few drinks with friends either. Two shots of vodka. I was sort of coasting because I was focusing on other things in life like working hobbies, but I decided it was time to get serious and really push myself. So my goal was to cut down a single digit body fat as quickly as I could for the summer while still having a social life and not turning into some weird shredded hermit <laughs> with a six pack. Now let's dive into the game plan for nutrition. I wanted to be more aggressive this time and see how fast I could shred the fat without losing a ton of strength or muscle. And I've tried the standard approach where you figure out your maintenance calories and then you cut 500 from that number. And honestly, the results were just kind of whatever in terms of fat loss and keeping muscle. My body always seems to respond better when I push hard for a bit and then take it easy. The straight up linear approaches just don't always work the best for me, even though they sound good in theory. And for me, a 500 calorie deficit feels just as annoying as a thousand calorie deficit. So I figure why not just eat less and get it over with quicker if I can. So to put this into action, I use Lyle McDonald's Ultimate Diet 2.0 as a rough starting point. His plan uses a carb cycling approach and comes with a specific workout routine. But I did change a few things to better suit my body so I didn't follow his plan to a T. But I did like his idea of having a high calorie refeed every week after several very low calorie days. Again, it's that non-linear approach, but on a weekly basis. So for the first four days of the week, I went with a PSMF approach. PSMF stands for protein sparing modified fast. And basically you just eat enough lean protein to meet your goals along with a few veggies and fish oil. These days we're usually maxing out at like 1200 to 1500 calories and carbs were kept to a minimum. Then for the next three days, I would have one day that was a big 6,000 calorie refeed where I really brought up the carbs, followed by a couple days with a more moderate calorie deficit that was more similar to a typical cut diet. Those very low calorie days were tough at first, but I got used to them. And surprisingly, they weren't even that bad, even on days where I was lifting and training jujitsu in the same day. The high calorie day was a welcome break each week, especially because I have a big appetite. And number two, I always felt super strong for a heavy workout the next day. I believe being able to push hard for PRs on that day played a really crucial role in maintaining muscle mass. And since I wasn't prepping for any competition and just challenging myself, I wanted to keep my favorite thing in the mix, which was grabbing a pizza on a UFC fight night every few weeks. <laughs> I'm a big MMA fan and usually get together with friends to watch a fight. So even if it slowed my progress a bit, it was worth it for the mental boost and it motivated me to stick to the plan. As for supplements, I was using coffee for the caffeine. I was taking creatine, using some basic health supplements like fish oil, fiber, a multivitamin, green tea extract, and vitamin D. I also used electrolyte powder like Pedialyte powder on the days where I felt a little bit of brain fog from the low carb intake and it would give me a boost. Now with my training, my gym routine was structured around the idea of two lighter, higher rep workouts 
earlier in the week and two heavier workouts later in the week, with one taking place the day after the refeed to take advantage of the carb up. This approach of having lighter and heavier days allowed my mind to narrow my focus on getting the most out of those two heavier days rather than lifting heavy all four days. I believe this allowed me to maintain my strength better than just a linear approach lifting heavy every single day. For cardio, I was training jujitsu two to three days per week, and I aimed to get in 10,000 steps per day by using my phone to track my daily step count. I occasionally added some extra high intensity interval training on a bike or rowing machine for the weeks that I had some pizza, which, you know, was usually once a month. Stop the cap. <laughs> So from that point on, I tracked my food using an app called Fat Secret. I weighed myself daily and I logged my average step count and other things in Excel. And after eight weeks, here's what happened. I lost a total of 15 pounds or just under two pounds per week. And I was able to take three inches off my waist. Now, according to the US Navy body fat calculator, which is actually pretty good for getting a rough estimate of my body fat level, this put me around 10% body fat. I think that was pretty accurate considering I maintained and even gained strength on some lifts and I had muscle definition and vascularity that I'd, I'd never seen before. My lowest weight was 179 pounds while on low carbs, which I hadn't really seen since my second year of hitting the gym consistently. It had been a long time since I'd seen that number. But it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows either though. I was feeling pretty beat up at this point and decided to take a diet break for a couple of weeks. My mind and body needed to recover and I figured it would also help normalize hormone levels and some of the hormones that tend to decline when you're cutting. However, the biggest downside was that I started feeling the side effects of getting lean and ended up binging a couple times after I introduced some tasty foods during my diet break. Up to that point, I was mainly living off salads, chicken bread, egg whites, protein shakes, and loads of veggies on the low calorie days, which were the strictest. So anything that tasted good was heavenly. <laughs> this happened despite even being more flexible on my higher calorie day and the other two moderate days where I tried to include tastier foods following a if it fits your macros type of approach. Back then, I didn't realize my body was starting to rebel at the lower body fat range and figured it was more of a discipline issue on my part, which was wrong. I remember hearing from competitive bodybuilder friends saying how they would be constantly hungry and even dream about food during contest prep. And I always thought that was exclusive to them or just being extremely lean, but man, I was wrong. It was definitely kicking in around 10 to 12% body fat and it only increased from there as I got leaner. Now the internet makes it sound like getting to 10% body fat and maintaining that is just a breeze, but let me tell you, it's not that easy for those of us who aren't naturally lean. And a legit 10% is leaner than you think. Most people underestimate their body fat levels and how lean 10% actually is. Anyway, after a two week break, I jumped back into the same plan and I did another four weeks of it. I also added more activity to see what would happen. I ramped up my steps to 13,000 on some days and even hit a personal best of 24,000 steps in one day, which for me is pretty crazy and I threw in another jujitsu session. After four weeks, the results surprised me though. My waist had only gone down a quarter of an inch and my body weight dropped by about an average of half a pound. I was also feeling lethargic, a bit run down, and it looked like I was holding a bit more water than usual. So after that month, I took another diet break and during this time I had to go to a few birthday parties. So I ended up gaining some weight back up to about 196 pounds. Keep in mind, a lot of that was water, but the birthday cake did do me dirty. Uh, cheesecake at nighttime, real late at night. Cheesecake could do, man. Top it up before you go to sleep. To give you an idea, I was about 185 pounds right before the break, and I decided I wanted to get back to that previous condition, but this time with a more moderate calorie deficit of 500 to 700 calories. However, I made the mistake of adding too many highly palatable foods, aka very tasty foods, and that really stoked the fire of wanting to binge even more. If it fits your macros is a concept that works, but you have to really pay attention to what foods trigger behavior issues. For example, if you can't have a bowl of cereal without eating the entire box, then don't have the cereal. Some people can have a few cookies and be fine, but that may not be you. I usually do well with moderation, but that can change when you're leaner than ever before. There's a quote from Lyle McDonald that is something to the effect of, for a lean person, feeling full equals 20,000 calories. And he's definitely spot on with that. Now, unless you're genetically blessed, once you get under 10% body fat, you're always wanting to eat more. You never really feel full. And I didn't want to depend on appetite suppressants except for the caffeine from my daily coffee. Now, despite the cravings, I still thought I could use some good old fashioned discipline and willpower to maintain this low body fat. So for the sake of continuing the rapid fat loss experiment, I decided to scrap the moderate deficit and try out Lyle's rapid fat loss program for a couple of weeks. Another reason I'd selected this is that I noticed on the low carb days or the days that had more of a keto approach, I noticed that I had less cravings overall. It seemed like when I would have carbs, I would just want more carbs. Carbs just seemed to beget more carbs. And that lower carb keto approach was actually effective at keeping a lot of those cravings at bay. Now, for those unfamiliar with the program, it's simple. You eat enough lean protein to hit your target, you add some green veggies, you add some fish oil, and that's pretty much it. Think of it as a PSMF diet with no breaks until a major high carb refeed at the end. It's intense and I wouldn't recommend it except for very specific scenarios and most people will never need to do anything like this and I don't recommend doing anything like this. I was consuming around 1,000 to 1,200 calories
calories daily, and the plan calls for lifting weights a few times a week to maintain muscle with minimal cardio otherwise. So to test my limits, I aim for 10 to 12,000 steps daily. I did jujitsu a couple of times a week and I was hitting the weights three to four times a week. Now all this goes against the guidelines of the diet that I just laid out, but I was really interested in finding my limits here as part of the experiment and I definitely found them. The last five days of the plan were brutal. I barely slept a few hours per night. I was waking up hungry. I was feeling irritated all the time, lethargic, and just utterly drained. My legs felt like lead when going upstairs too. That was another thing that stood out to me. I definitely surpassed where I was at the end of the last diet phase. I'm leaner now than I was then, and I'm also a few pounds heavier. So I think I had regained some lean mass that I may have lost, and I regained it during that maintenance phase and held on to it during this RFL phase. Uh, the downside though is I've definitely experienced some negative symptoms that I have not felt before. My legs feel heavy, they feel like lead. I'll go to bed at like 11 o'clock at night and wake up at 2 a.m. wide awake for the rest of the day. Food focus, it's hard to focus on like movies and TV shows in general, everything just feels kind of boring. It was basically everything that I'd heard from bodybuilder friends of mine talking about how they felt once they were deep into contest prep and getting really lean. But I kept going because as you know, YouTube videos must be made and I wanted to finish what I started. So at the end of the 12 days, I dropped from 196 pounds to 182 pounds over a pound per day. And my waist shrank from 33.5 inches to 32.5 inches. And I looked my leanest ever. Now to my surprise, my strength levels remained solid the whole time. I even set a PR on Romanian deadlifts one day. I love carbs and I love to eat. So performing this well on low calories and carbs was a big surprise to me. The downside, however, well, apart from the symptoms I mentioned, I started looking flat and watery thanks to likely elevated cortisol levels. And after a high carb refeed and a few days at maintenance, I looked leaner than ever and a lot of that water went away. It felt like a good place to stop. So I ended the experiment there and stopped cutting altogether. Now, all in all, after 13 weeks of cutting, here was a summary of my results. I lost 15 pounds. I dropped my body fat from about 17% to around 8% and my strength levels held steady and even improved in some areas. Now this experiment taught me that I could lose a maximum of around two pounds per week with most of it being fat. And that number could have possibly been higher if I didn't have the occasional pizza, which would negate the deficit for an entire week in some cases. But generally I'd say that two pounds per week is the max I'd ever aim for when under 20% body fat. However, two pounds per week is an aggressive pace and that brings me to my point. Although these methods worked, they were rough at times, especially due to the carb restriction. A rapid fat loss protocol can obviously work, but I'd only recommend them for very specific situations. The vast majority of people trying to get leaner will never need this stuff and shouldn't. Remember that the more you deprive your body of calories, the more it pushes back to maintain balance. Your body doesn't care about you having nice abs. It cares about surviving. It's programmed to survive. Cut down your calories too drastically and your body turns up hunger signals, messes with your sleep and boosts adrenaline levels. And if you overdo your activity, you'll see a rise in cortisol levels, potentially leading to water retention and making it even tougher to shed fat. That. Sustainability becomes a real issue. And at some point, you'll need to bring your calorie intake back to maintenance levels to stay healthy. And that's when the risk of overeating and gaining back weight comes in after a period of intense calorie restriction. By contrast, a gradual, flexible diet can help maintain results in the long term as it allows you to enjoy some of your favorite foods while cutting and prevents overly harsh restrictions. Plus, you'll sleep better and feel more energetic, which will increase your calorie expenditure throughout the day and during workouts. But remember, not all results are sustainable regardless of your approach. Single digit body fat isn't something most people can maintain without genetics on their side or a lifestyle that's very restrictive and tough to keep up. Joe Delaney, who's one of the most shredded guys on YouTube, says that single digit body fat is a place that you visit. It's not a place that you live. And I agree 100%. Getting shredded isn't healthy or practical to maintain year round. I only kept that look for about three months before going back up to a comfortable body fat, which was around 15% for me. I love the shredded look, but in the future, it'll be something that I really only do in the summer for a few months if at all. I'm not looking to be that lean most of the year. As a rough guideline, I think most would feel best at around 15 to 18% body fat for guys and probably around 22 to 25% for women. At these levels, you'll look good, enjoy social outings, and you won't have to deal with weird cravings or negative health effects that could be dangerous. But remember, these are just numbers. Your body, health history, and comfort should dictate your ideal body fat percentage, not some random advice on the internet. But anyway, hopefully you took something from all of this. If you want to check out any of the stuff that I offer, check the links in the description. And uh, besides that, I think you should watch this video next. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea.